How many of you are not optometrists? Lots, more than quite a few. So then I have to apologize for the terminology I was using earlier because I thought I had a room of 100 optometrists and I don't. So I'll switch my language so that we don't talk so much about the spherical equivalence and ACA ratios and you know, uh, book retinoscopy. And we'll use more normal terms. Um, so we're going back to review what we said here of how optometrists affect posture. So we can, we can affect it on the, this axis, we can affect it on that axis, or on this way, this axis. Many different ways. So for instance, we have two kinds of prisms. One kind of prism shifts your hips. Those are yoke prisms. And a different kind of prism shifts your shoulders in and out. Those are non-yoke prisms. So for the optometrist, base in and base out would be your shoulders, and base up and base down would be your hips. Um, that's the second picture and the fourth picture. Each of them pulls your eyes outward. So when we're prescribing, and we learned in school, if you have double vision, put on base in prisms because it'll, you know, it'll bend the light out to where your eyes are. So if you have your eyes sitting outwards and it's hard to pull them inwards, you put prisms on that bend the light out and then you're more comfortable. But we find a lot of patients that instead of using glasses that bend the light outwards, which is a cortical thing because it's your environment doing that, um, I find more that the body reactions and reflexes work better. So if you put a base down prism, if you put prisms on that make everything look upwards and your eyes move up and out, that's a reflex level. Even people in a coma, if you tip their chins up and down, their eyes move up and down. So those reflexes are at a subcortical level. And uh, sometimes people prefer to have glasses that hit them at the brainstem level instead of glasses that they need to still use some mental energy for, even though it's less mental energy. So when we're prescribing, some people do well by shifting their bodies, and other people do well by shifting their shoulder and their eyes. So um, we're going to just review this a little bit. Base down prisms mean that all the light comes from up. The, 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 the light bounces off of objects. So if you have an object, the light from above there is sitting, hitting this object coming into my eye in a certain angle. And somebody earlier asked about habitual position. So you have people who sit habitually with their chins down or chins up or tilted. But whatever their habit is, that's what they're used to. So when we put a base down prism on top of whatever they're used to, it's going to move the image upward and then the light that comes in is coming at a downward angle and hitting more of the bottom of their retinas. And then it's getting processed in a, through the temporal lobes. So for Kurt, there's new research out. Uh, it's, a, it's an article called the brain, is a bi the brain is Wearing a Bifocal. Have you read it? Okay. It's talking about how the inferior retina and the superior retina process totally differently and that you pay more attention to what's up above you than what's down below you which is interesting because people who read, read below. Uh, but it's, uh, I think if you just Google brain bifocals, it's a, it's a relatively new research that's out. Uh, and it's saying that the, the retinal processing is very different. Uh, Patrick and I are going to be discussing that kind of stuff and some research later. Um, so base down prisms will push the target up, the light's going to come down, hit the bottom of the retina, and then through that, there's a lot of filtering. So we talked earlier about the 126 million receptors on the retina, but the ones that are on the bottom travel through the optic nerve, through the temporal lobes. Those are the optic radiations that go. So the signals come in through the optic nerve, they split at the, at the chiasm, and then they go into the brain stem and the limbic system, and then from there, some of them stay there and some of them go further. So there's direct connections through the how am I and where am I pathways from when the light goes out of the eye. So remember we talked earlier about how the retina is part of the brain. 
So the light is hitting the retina, 126 million receptors. It's filtering down to only 1.2 million coming out. So there's 100 to 1 filtering. There's 126 million on the front, and then it's filtered, 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 till only 1.2 million come out. So that's a 100 to 1 ratio. And then when the signals come out, then they go through the chiasm, some split over to the other side, some go straight to the hypothalamus, some go straight to the amygdala, some go straight to the brainstem, some go straight to the dorsal raphe, the nucleus. There's so many places they go subcortically. That's that Wyoming piece. And then the rest of them, slower, go through the parietal lobes from above and the temporal lobes from below and eventually get to the visual cortex. So you have the ones that come upwards, the ones that go downwards. This is all in Josephine Moore's book, too. Then you have base right prisms. Base right prisms bend light. So here's your target you're looking at. The base right prism moves the target over here. The light from the target comes in. It hits the nasal side of the left eye and the temporal side of the right eye. Boom. And depending on what you're aware of, or where the circuitry has a problem, uh, there's going to be a shift. Now, when I put yoked prisms on people that do that, that move everything, many people say, I don't see any difference, everything's the same. Those are people who are not aware of their peripheries. You put this on some people, a big base right prism, and they go, whoa, everything shifted. That's because they're aware of the background space. There's other people, you put the same thing on and they go, yep, there it is. I'm seeing this target. Yep, I'm seeing this target. They move their eyes over without realizing it. They are not aware of the background at all and the target is the same. There's no change. So you can tell which people are attuned to their peripheral processing just by sticking a prism on and comparing right with left. And that's in Penelope's chapter. She has a whole, uh, a whole little section on how often with brain injury patients, you put base right on and they see that change, and you put base left on and they go, nope, nothing's different, or vice versa. Right, Penelope? Right. right. So she read it. So her chapter is a great reference for it. Um, base left prisms do the same thing the other way. And it's not that there has to be damage uh, it doesn't mean you have to have damage in a particular brain area. It can be just disrupted. So people come with CT scans and MRI scans and they're fine uh, and the doctors are claiming, well, you have no problem, you're perfect. But there's a disruption. So when I give examples, we talk about an orchestra and somebody say, well, which, you know, which part of my brain is broken? Well, none of them. It's like an orchestra. Which of those uh, musicians are playing wrong? Because the music sounds horrible. Well, let's check each one. The violin's playing right, the clarinet's playing right, the cello, everybody's playing right. Where's the problem? Let's check their instruments. Maybe an instrument's missing a string. Nope, everything's perfect. They're missing the conductor. And there's a conductor that says, hey, we're all gonna start now. We're all gonna finish now. We're all gonna play at this tempo. But what happens in the brain is there's so many different things that are working in parallel processes and they're all working at different timings and those timings have to be in sync with each other. And when they get out of sync and the doctors are checking just the ears or just the eyes or just the balance or just this or just the right side or just the left side and they're not looking at how it all integrates, there's going to be a problem. And it's not pick upable. You can't pick it up on a... Um, on the, the scans, it doesn't show. So one of the nice ways to objectively show it is the right eye because it shows in the eye movements and the control.